There is a new Drake disc that surfaced online towards Kendrick Lamar. The entire world was waiting for it, and we finally got it. So if you guys want to check out our future reactions to future disses, such as Kendrick Lamar's future disc, or maybe some other ones that come out, check the pinned comment. We're going to react to them live on Patreon. But, Lou, let's get into this. This is a massive moment for hip-hop. And listen, word was is that this was fake at first, and then we got the second version. It sounded complete. And then after that, Elliot Wilson came out and said that this is official. So, just before we get into the breakdown, how do you feel about it? We've reached the fucking infinity war of hip-hop right now, and Drake is Thanos, bro. It's really 20 versus 1, like he's saying. We've never seen anything like this in hip-hop history. Even if you want to go back to Tupac on Hit Em Up, where he was going at Junior Mafia and Biggie. If you want to take it to TakeOver, where Jay-Z was going at um, fucking Mob Deep and Nas and whoever else. We've never seen a rapper in the position that Drake's in go for this many targets that are not just some... You know, low-key rappers, underground, backpack rappers. No, these are some of the biggest artists in the industry. And he is sending out verbal assault at all of them. This is literally like Thanos, where one second he's kicking Doctor Strange. Then he's throwing fire out at Iron Man. Then he's punching Nebula. Drake goes from Future to Rick Ross to Metro Boomin. Absolutely. He is not stopping on this track. The energy feels malicious. He's spitting fucking venom. And what I love the most about this is that he's taunting these guys, bro. He is reenacting Kendrick Lamar ad-libs with the huh and then he's going for you know an interpolation of the future wicked 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 hook like he thought this out so well it's a it's a strategic move and I'm happy that we waited this long but let me ask you what was your feeling when you first heard it I was shocked just because once you start to get into the diss track, you realize how calculated he is. And obviously, we're going to go through the bars, but it's just so well structured. And what's cool about it as well is that I feel like this is maybe an intro for something else. This is possibly going to lead up to something else because there was two different versions that were released online, right? You had the original version um, that was completely different, right? You had different production. You didn't get the academics um, memo on the beat switch, right? Saying, who's top five? Are, are you smoking, smoking on Kendrick? So it was a completely different version of it but this one that we did get that Elian Wilson said was complete listen it's definitely scary and I want to see what happens next because once you go towards the end of the track it seems like something got cut off there's a beat switch absolutely and then you have you have Drake saying um I want I was gonna keep it PG which is a double entendre like I was gonna keep it clean cut parental guidance but also PG lying so absolutely I wonder where that's headed but um, I'm just happy that this this ha ended up happening because so many people were saying Drake wasn't going to be a formidable opponent against Kendrick Lamar. They were saying, oh, his ghostwriters are going to maybe cook something up for him. Fuck all that. We're in war right now. And as we have it, when I'm looking at the Like That verse from Kendrick in comparison to this full four-minute uh, this song from Drake, Drake is in the lead. It, it, it's, a, it's a long race. The race isn't over. But... We'll get more into it in the breakdown Absolutely. because I want to explain why I think Drake outdid what Kendrick did on Like That. For sure. Well, he delivered you close to a four-minute track. And even at this point, I want to say this. Watch out for this Kendrick Lamar diss track because he has no choice but to answer this. It's going to be th nuts, th th bro. This is going to be crazy. And that's why I like this move from Drake is because obviously Kendrick Lamar is known as the boogeyman, right? And we've admitted in so many different podcasts, that's just a guy you don't want to fuck with. He's literally one of the best lyricists to ever do it. And to be able to open up the floodgates now to this battle... It's going to be interesting to see what Kendrick Lamar does next, but let's get into this. So, the song starts off with this first lyric. I can never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hands. And obviously, this is in reference to Future because Future on, I believe it was We Don't Trust You, which was the intro track off of We Don't Trust You between Metro Boomin and Future, called Drake a fan. And obviously... That's probably not the case in Drake's eyes because Drake gifted Future his first number one in 2021 with Way Too Sexy off of CLB. So how do you feel like he started off the track with that first lyric? Well, right away, it's like, I, I like the fact that he's going at Future with that line because how could you even answer back to that? You can't answer you back can't, to that. You can bro. It's a fact. He's stating facts all across this fucking so this, this this whole song, bro. And I feel like the thing about Future 2 as a target is that I like the fact that he didn't even spend too much time on him because, mm -hmm. realistically speaking, I don't think any of us really imagine Future being able to clap back with a full track because, lyrically, he's just not cut from the same cloth. He's not. 
What is Future going to do in a diss track? I'm sorry, no, but there's he's not that type do. of MC. But let's keep on going. Um, you pussies can get booked outside of America for Nan. I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. Um, I, I do think some of these artists could probably tour all across the world. But I, I get what he's saying. He's the biggest artist in the world, and he's flexing that. Internationally, no one can um, touch him. I, I, I'm, I'm still with him here. I'm the hit maker you all depend on. Very true. A lot of people, as we'll get into later with some of the Rick Ross stuff, a lot of people do depend on Drake and his hit, his hit-making ability. Um, you won't ever take no chain off us. This is where we get to the Kendrick Lamar disses. How the fuck you big step in with a size 7 man's on? So this is a direct response to what Kendrick said and like that when he said, um, we snatching chains, we got two T's with me, I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos, it's up. Drake is saying you'll never snatch a chain off of me. And that's why I think Drake wins this round is because this is one of the many moments where he's taking precise lines that Kendrick shot out at him unlike that and he's responding to them and he's twisting them away to his own favor and his own advantage absolutely um, and of course the size 7 man's on he's making fun of Kendrick's size which he'll do that multiple times within um, the track exactly um, all right, let's keep going on with this. The next one, this is another um, big diss towards Kendrick Lamar, kind of attacking his business and his business relationship with Top Dog Entertainment, saying, extortion, baby, whole career you've been shook up because Top told you drop and give me 50 like some push-ups, huh? So basically, this is the main chorus throughout the song, and it's the part of the song that people are catching on to the most, and it's also insinuating the fact that Kendrick Lamar has been kind of been taken advantage of, especially on the business side of things, for his record, saying that him and Top Dog have been splitting 50 50 on all of his records and you know he should be looking into his deal before he's going to speak to drake about any sort of business or any sort of music absolutely but, but the uh, next big yeah, the one, one is nuts too would be um your last one bricked you're really not on shit they make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit so this is drake taking somewhat of a similar angle that jay cole took on seven minute drill but he's not he's, doing the whole catalog he's not the whole catalog he's just saying mr morale and the big steppers um commercially wasn't for kendrick great. standards wasn't, wasn't, great. wasn't great in terms of the first week sales and i think that to be honest with you even though he's taking some of the same angles it feels more lethal here absolutely so it feels more lethal because you're not attacking the entire catalog exactly he knows he's not going to be able to touch the tip of a butterfly you can't touch gkmc and you can't touch them but there could be arguments to be made for mr Ron the big steppers i still feel like it's an amazing album absolutely but he was going after that but and let's keep going yeah on and with then this. um they make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit I like that he's saying that because that is a narrative that is factual, bro. Like, a lot of people are rooting for Drake's downfall. And like I mentioned earlier, they didn't even see him being a horse in this race. And between you and I, we've said this before, we just want to see the best rapper win this battle, whoever comes with the best diss tracks. And ultimately, I feel like everyone should view it the same way. Like, fuck who your favorite is. Take the bias aside and look at who is really dropping the best possible diss tracks. Absolutely. Well, if you guys could see in the studio, we got the damn vinyl off back. We have, obviously, you the guys big have been three. seeing this. Yeah, you guys have been seeing this for a long time. I mean, between Lou and I, Kendrick's been our favorite rapper for such a long time. But, you know, even and Drake, Drake is, is also absolutely. one of our favorites. So. And even J. Cole. So, I mean, for us, it was just more of a situation where we wanted to see where things would go. Um, and now it's quite interesting because we do have a response. But let's keep going on with this. Uh, pull up your contract because we got to see the split. The way you're doing splits, bitch, your pants might rip. So this is interesting because in 2022, it was rumored that Drake signed to Universal Music Group for $500 million while being able to keep all of his masters. Drake has seamlessly confirmed this record deal in his song Major Distribution. That's important because he's backing up the fact that, listen, you know, whatever's going on with your business, that's yours. But I'm not taking, you know, I, no one's taking advantage of me here. And I'm completely fine with my records. I'm making my money and no one could really touch my business sort of structure. Absolutely. And, and to be honest with you, if Kendrick comes back, he can't clap back at this because... It's true. Drake has been the most dominant. He's been the most business savvy when it comes to his record. That being said... And how do you feel about that approach, though? I, I think what you said about Kendrick can respond to that. I'm not sure if I agree just because we don't really know the ins and outs of Kendrick's deals. So That's true. We, we right. can't really comment on I'm that. I'm just saying in but... the context of the song and the writing. Let's say we take the song at face value for what it really is. Drake's really putting himself in a position where he's saying, I'm the most dominant on the business and the numbers side. And yes. There's nothing you could do about it. And you've been mad at me my whole life for it. So that's I, kind of the way that I'm interpreting it up to now. I think the more interesting angle is the next one, though. You better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse. You better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say drop. You better drop and, do, and give them 50. So I love this angle so much because I feel like 
Kendrick's angle, or at least one of them, will probably be that Drake is a pop star and that he's ventured into doing all these commercial songs. When in reality, when you really look at it, Kendrick has also ventured into that lane. Absolutely. He's made songs with Maroon 5. He's made songs with Taylor Swift. He's had those types of records where he's collaborating with people that the main hip hip hop core heads are going to say, why is he going over there and trying to make some bread? Why isn't he focusing on... I think it's I th yeah, shit, I think it's a cool know? perspective on the track as well because like you said, Kendrick Lamar is probably gonna attack that fact from him, but now it's kind of like even playing yes. field. It's like saying like he's eliminating eh, the angle. Absolutely. It's saying that, okay, you know, you're probably gonna come at me with this, but at the end of the day, who's really right, who's really wrong? we've both been doing this. Yes, so yes. that was a cool angle, but let's let's keep going on. Uh, Pip Squeak, pipe down. You ain't no big three. SZA got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Um, So this one was interesting because they were talking about the Grammys, right? I believe that was it. I was reading a couple of different breakdowns from Twitter, but how did you um interpret this bar over here? This one, I was kind of like, well, it could kind of be seen different ways. Is it because Travis is doing more numbers now? SZA is doing more numbers 21's doing more numbers. I don't know if 21's doing more numbers. I, I, but. I, I think that's what Drake's intent is here. He's saying, like, all these artists are bigger than you. They're more relevant than you. People are checking out for them more. They're more active in the industry. But in terms of, like, you ain't in no big three, I disagree with that. I, I think ultimately, even J. Cole apologizing and the narrative running of J. Cole's now lost his spot in the big three, fuck all that. Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, no matter what happens in this battle, that big three is cemented, and it was cemented, in the 2010s decade. Absolutely. You cannot erase history. So I disagree with that sentiment, but let's keep it going. Like your label boy, you in the scope right now, and you're going to feel the aftermath of what I write down. So this was clever. It was witty. Nothing crazy. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, obviously referencing Interscope, uh, which is a record label. And Aftermath and Records. And Aftermath, which is um, sort of like underneath Interscope that Kendrick Lamar is signed Dr. to Dr. Dre's well. label, yes. yeah. All right, let's um, keep going I'm on at the this. top of the mountain, so you tight now. Just have to... Um, just to, just to have this talk with you, ass, I had to hike town, um, and big, then we get an interesting one. Yeah, this one's one. cool. Okay, big difference between Mike then and Mike now. Um, what the fuck is this? Twenty v one. What's a prince to a king? He a son. Genius. Absolutely. So this is so cool because obviously on the like that verse, Kendrick Lamar said, "Well, listen. At the end of the day." Michael Jackson passed away first, and I'm Prince. I'm the one that kept my integrity. I'm the one that released the better music, and I'm almost as popular as you in the same sentiment. So Drake clapping back with this is saying, yeah, okay, you had just admitted that, you know, you're my son. That's really what it is. So I feel, and it's also cool it's because Michael Jackson is obviously referenced as, you know, the king of pop, and yes. then after that, playing on that with Prince, I feel like that was really cool. And the idea there. that, of course... The prince is the king's son, and the whole angle of, like, Drake is probably viewing this as, in some ways, Kendrick, you're my son. I gave you a big break putting you on my album, Take Care. I took you on that Club Paradise tour when you weren't really an established mainstay in hip-hop. So, again, another angle that makes sense, and like you said, I love the fact that he is fully acknowledging the Kendrick disses and turning them on their head. Absolutely. Fucking genius. Great chess move. Next up, get more love in the city that you from. Then this one... This was funny because it was unexpected. Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some drums. <laughs> that was crazy. It, it's kind of insinuating like you have no part to play in this just because you've helped me make records and, you know, you're basically just a producer. Listen, Metro in my eyes is still a legend, but yeah, at absolutely. the end of the day, it, it was just still cool to see that, hey, you know, Metro, you're not going unnoticed as well. I acknowledge what you did and... You know, you're not uh, you're not free from this. I you think know? it's more the fact that like like, bro, what are you gonna say? Are you gonna start rapping on a track, or you're gonna go back to Twitter and you know start tweeting our responses? I think it's more that angle. Um, but very interesting. Next up, I'm the six god on the front runner. Um, y'all guys' manager was Chubbs' his little blunt runner. Um, claim the six, and you boys ain't even from it. And when you boys bought, and when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Cash blowing able bread out here tricking shit. We he do, do for doing, bitches. Yeah, he um, doing, he doing for. for. Okay, so this is basically going into like again business structure and money dealings between um, Cash XO the weekend, and basically saying that you know you guys you guys aren't even from the six, and you guys are claiming it. And then once you guys got your bread, you guys ran away from it, and now your manager spending all your money, and well you're left in a different position. Absolutely. So but I found that funny. Yeah, but let's skip forward to some more interesting um, bars. I just got them done, boy. Don't make me have to chip a nail. Rolling loud stage, y'all were turned. I was slick as hell. She'll probably change if your baby mama start to kiss and tell. Hugs and kisses, man. Don't tell me about no switches. First of all, again, another smart move by Drake. He is fucking calculating all of this because he's bringing in another 
piece of ammunition that Kendrick might use against him with him painting his nails and whatnot, and he's saying it in a way where he's unbothered by it. Absolutely. But this is also another thing that I just picked up on. Shit will probably change if your baby mama start to kiss and tell maybe Rihanna and ASAP Rocky in that conversation. Who knows? That's another one. So that one's a bit unclear because he's not yeah. exactly naming ASAP Rocky, but that's just what's surfacing within the community. And then hugs and kisses, man, don't tell me about no switches. So again, referencing... I believe he's referencing the Kendrick Lamar like, who said, um, you better come with three switches. Okay, no. So this one is actually towards hugs and kisses referring to uh, the week as XO. Yeah. So that was the But I think it's also a mention to Kendrick. That um, was interesting. What else do we have? Okay, then we have, th this one was interesting. I be with some bodyguards. Sorry, let me restart. I be with some bodyguards like Whitney. So this is a double entendre here. First of all, um, kind of maybe a triple entendre. I be with some bodyguards like Whitney. He's saying that he's with bodyguards the same way that Kendrick exclaim to have some henchmen around him but bodyguards like Whitney because Whitney Houston starred in a romance movie in 1992 called The Bodyguard and of course the second why it's a double entendre is because Whitney is also referencing Kendrick Lamar's wife whose name is Whitney um, and I think that this is sort of Drake doing the Virginia Williams effect where it's like I'm gonna let a ring on you like Virginia Williams where it's not meaning too much but he's like He's trying to get under his skin. He's absolutely. mentioning his wife's name. Like he's, I, like he's I provoking know going, him. Absolutely. He's, he's provoking, provoking him. him. Um, then after that, it goes into the drop in 50 hook a bit more. Um, Calls Drake, him a midget. Absolutely. Drake continues to repeat it. Then we get into some more stuff. Um, I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Ricky. Can't believe he jumping in. Um, this, this guy. Turning 50. Um, then after that, you also have every song that made it on the chart he got from Drizzy. So this is very interesting, all right? So I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Ricky. Obviously, there was a story going around that Drake flew out, you know, Rick Ross's baby mother, and, you know, he ended up bringing her out to a show. And she posted it everywhere. Cuff her then, like I'm Ricky because Rick Ross used what, to be a correctional officer. Absolutely. Then this one's cool as well because he says this man is turning 50 like his age, but also insinuating to the 50 Cent and Rick Ross beef that they used to have. Yes. That's another little double entendre right there. More ammunition. That was fantastic. And then this one was crazy. Every song that made it on the chart, he got it from Drizzy. And that's actually factual. You look at all of Rick Ross's biggest hits, all of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. Well, close to all of them. And it's practically all featuring Drake. That's why you cannot go against this, this song and try to remove its validity bro because he's spitting facts on a lot of these bars absolutely on it's most really, of them and, it, and they're all layered they're all well delivered but, but let's, let's keep, keep on, on going. going with this um all right so let me skip ahead here so we know why you mad i didn't, I didn't even trip in all that little heartbroken twitter shit for bitches i think that's a mention towards metro Boomin, but i don't really know um then what else do we have um, so then we got the J. Cole stuff. Yeah, the J. Okay. Cole stuff. Yeah. Okay, you, so you let's get into this. It. Okay. Um, and that fucking song y'all got did not start the beef with us. This shit been driving in a pot. Now I'm heating up. So insinuating to that, like that was just kind of the cherry on top, and that this has been going on for years at this Which point. Which is true. Over absolutely. ten years in the making. Absolutely. He admitted it himself. And if you guys want to go watch breakdowns online, there's full of different things that have gone on. I don't care what Cole think. That dot shit was weak as fuck. So talking about the J. Cole apology and saying. That's J. Cole. That's his perspective. Mine is a lot different. I'm going to come after you, and what you dropped was fucking weak, and I'm here right now to battle. Drake, That's Drake very is, interesting. Drake is saying, I'm going to be standing 10 toes down on this whole situation. That's what he's saying, and I think he's also saying that, unlike J. Cole drawing back the whole idea that Mr. Morale wasn't good, no, I'm standing on that. That shit was weak. I think that's what... Uh, what Drake is saying, which Absolutely. once again, we disagree. I think Mr. Morale was a very solid album. Um, next up... Um, champagne trip and he not easing up okay then after that this one is very interesting because this is insinuating that kendrick lamar needs top doc to be able to fight his battles calling top to see if top want to piece it up want to piece it up top want to piece it up not nah, pussy now you on your own when you speaking up you done rolled deep this hold on you done rolled deep to this it's not fucking deep enough begging kai sanat boy you're not fucking beating us. So basically saying that at the end of the day, it's you versus me. That's it. There's no one else involved. You got to stare at me now and you have to come through me. And that is basically all that is on the table at this point. I love that type of fierce energy saying that I'm not calling anyone to do this for me. I'm here. I'm here right now. And this is getting done. But you want to go into the next one, Lou? Absolutely. Um, numbers wise, I'm out of here. You're not fucking creeping up. So I thought of creeping Metro Boomin in the weekend right Absolutely. away. Um, so maybe st saying that the weekend isn't really on his level, which I mean, numbers wise, they're kind of on similar 
uh, maybe Plain not fields. for like first week not sales, first week sales, sales so or album sales as a whole, but like streaming wise, you know, they they've both been at the top of their so game. It's still valid to some degree. And then he says, money wise, I'm out of here. You're not fucking sneaking up. So this goes back to DOT, the money, power, respect. The last one's better. And Drake is focusing on the money and the power. Um, which is very interesting to see him take that angle. Anyways, after that, Cornball, you show money, merch, money, fee to us. Um, I'm going to let, you, let you guys work it out because I've seen enough. This, this is- ain't everything I know. Don't wake a demon up. He repeats that twice, which makes us believe he's got more in the vault. Oh, he's got more in the vault. Drake's well, got more, more in the vault. What more do you have in the vault? That's the question at hand right now. This is the question. So, so let me ask you this. Do you think it's just an empty threat or do you think there could be something else? Because no, like, he knows. He's opened up the can of worms. Yeah. Kendrick opened up the can of worms. Drake's opened up his can of worms. And now it's like it's back and forth. And I think that he's ready to go round for round with Kendrick Lamar. And then that's going to conclude the first part of it. Now we get into the second part. And this is where things get very interesting, right? Because you get an interlude by DJ Academics. What top five you smoking on, Kendrick? And this was live on Twitch when DJ Academics... Was um, reacting to family ties. Exactly. So he took it, kind of taunting him and kind of making people realize, well, he's tapped in. He's listening to the narratives and he's understanding what's going on online. So... Once you start getting into it, the outro of that is drop a 50 bag um, for the mob in the spot, whatever the case may be. Uh, I was really, I hold on, listen, this one's cool. Uh, I was really, really trying to keep it PG. Obviously, like Lou said at the beginning, you know, trying to keep it parental guidance, trying to keep it clean, but also keeping it PG, PG lying. Then this is where things get interesting. Um, but that, that's pretty much it, though. But it pretty much ends there. Not interesting in the lyrics. Interesting in the way that this stops. Because oh, okay, I see. if you go to the end of the track, bro, it sounds like it got cut off. It sounds like it got fucking cut off. So now this is the question I'm asking myself, right? Is there more to this track? Is there more things that we'll be seeing in the future? Or did they do it on purpose and they ended here? I don't even, that's think, I don't even think it's a question just because... You get a full-on beat switch, then you have Drake starting a verse, and then he stops. Like, after, like, a couple of lines, absolutely. I think this was a fucking scare tactic. I think this is him letting him know, listen, I'm ahead of you. I'm thinking one step ahead of you, because even once you drop your response to what I just came out with, I'm right there. I'm right there. I'm ready. I already have the next song. I already played some of it for you. I'm right there. Absolutely. I'm right there. That's what's crazy, is that the mind tactics and the chess move was absolutely impeccable. So, guys... That is the track. This is psychological warfare, guys. That is what we have. If you think it ends here, you are you're you're dead wrong. You're wrong. You are dead wrong. And I just think that we need to give Drizzy his props because everybody was counting him out of this race, and he fucking delivered with this song. This is verbal fucking assault, bro, to the highest degree. Is it enough? To put Kendrick in the ground? Obviously not. Kendrick is going to come out guns blazing. And that's why I'm excited, bro. We have a fucking battle on our hands. Absolutely. You're watching two titans battle it out. And that's what I love about this whole thing is that Drake did not back down. Drake said, fuck it. I'm going to go after this and we're going to see what really happens at the end of it. But now I have a question for you, Lou. Is Kendrick Lamar on the clock? When do we get this? And... If we do get it, what angles could you take with Drake? You know, because obviously with the story of Adidon, that was a massive, uh, that was a massive reveal. That was a huge like gotcha moment, right? That was huge. That was the nail in the coffin for Drake in that 2018 battle. But with this, it's kind of like, where else could you go with it? You know, and how could you one up me with this one? So where do you think he goes with the next one? And do you think he's on the clock? Well, that's what's interesting here, right? Is that like we have to imagine that there probably isn't any more dirt on Drake in the sense that. He got exposed for hiding the sun or whatever the case may be, his relationship with Sophie. Like, that was all exposed already. So it's like, could Kendrick really dig anything else up? And on the flip side of things, Kendrick's life has been super secretive and there's not really that much to grab from on Kendrick's side of things either. So I think that if someone has a haymaker, if they have that real sauce, that secret sauce, that could be what wins each respective guy the battle because that's what Juan Pusha T the battle. Absolutely. So now it's the question of like, who's going to get who? Who's going to get who in the gotcha moment? And I think it could be either one of them, right? Because you have Drake that's kind of leaving everything open-ended and he's inviting the smoke. And now you have Kendrick Lamar who started it kind of first and said that, okay, give me your best shot and let's see who, let's see who lasts. Let's see who ends up doing this. And right now, I'm in no position to say who's going to win this because at first, if you would have asked me, 
you know, our money was kind of on Kendrick Lamar because that's where the sentiment is, right? You got the control versus he's been asking this for years. He dropped like that first. He's the one that invited it. He must have the best versus whatever the case may be. But if this is the way Drake is responding, then I'm sorry. Like we were saying in the previous videos, it is officially a level playing field. And like you were saying at the beginning, Drake is one up right now. Drake is one up, but it's not going to end. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not in here. Obviously, it's, not. it's a very, it's a very loose lead. And like it could be snagged at, at a moment, and that's what I'm trying to say though with this is that it's so interesting because we're going to see what ends up happening. Prediction: I think that if Drake drops this on streaming services, which at the time of the recording, Spotify is teasing that it will be coming out on DSPs. I think that if Drake drops it officially. Kendrick comes in a couple of days. You think so? I think he comes that oh. quick. I think Kendrick yes, comes that fucking yes, quick. Yes, sir. So is he on the clock? He is on the clock. He's on the clock. Oh, yeah. Officially. He's on the clock. TikTok. So we'll see what ends up happening. Because at this point, it's not a loose this. You know what I'm trying to say? It wasn't a couple of bars. So full this track. Absolutely. But I will say this. I don't want Kendrick Lamar to rush it. But... Some more information and context. Apparently, Kendrick Lamar has had a diss track in the tuck for four years, according to academics. Joe Budden also alluded to the fact that Kendrick Lamar has had a diss track in the tuck for a very long time. And also, there's some Drake lyrics that are alluding to the fact that he wants Kendrick Lamar to drop with the whole four-year bar. So that's interesting. He could well. wait if he wants to because Drake had that period of, a period of grace where he took a lot of time to put it out, which... I mean, for all we know, he, he maybe would have sat on it for longer, for all we know. But I think that the same way it was an absolute shock and a stunner and a moment of excitement when Drake immediately responded to Infrared with Duppy, I think Kendrick is going to take that same approach and be like, this is my angle now. You waited this long. I'm ready on impact to Absolutely. clap back at you. So, guys, we'll end up seeing what ends up happening. We're going to be doing full coverage on this entire battle. Hip-hop is alive in 2024. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you do want to catch our first reactions to upcoming diss tracks, whether it be Kendrick's response to this diss song or Drake's future response to whatever the case may be, check out the pinned comment. The link to our Patreon is there. Thank you guys for rocking with us. And we'll see you soon. Peace.